So guys, in today's session, we will talk about logistic regression and hyperparameter tuning. So first we will see what is logistic regression and how it works. So logistic regression is a classification algorithm which is based on linear regression, right? Logistic regression is a classification algorithm, right? This is not a regression algorithm, right? This algorithm we use for classification and mostly we use this uh, algorithm for binary classification, but we can also use this for multi-class classification. So logistic regression is one of the most popular machine learning algorithm which comes under supervised learning technique. It is used for predicting the categorical dependent variable using a given set of independent variables. So what does mean by here categorical dependent variable? means a column where we have some categories it right? means uh, uh, we have a target column and in the target column we have categories like yes no zero or false zero one true false right so instead of continuous value in the target column we have some predefined categories in the dependent variable right so this is called categorical dependent variable it is commonly used for binary classification problems, but it can also be used for multi-class classification problem. Right? We will also cover the practic uh, practical example of multi-class classification problem in a while. It predicts the probability of a given input as the output. So whenever we use logistic regression, right? So at the back end, uh, it accept the inputs, right, and return the probability after that uh, on the basis of some threshold value right, we convert the probability into a predefined class if we have two classes let's say zero and one so either in the output we will get the zero or we will get the one here in this image you can see uh, suppose we have some input features like x1 x2 x3 right and this one is a constant term here and here we have uh, corresponding weights w1 w2 and w3 right and in the logistic regression if we have binary classification problem so we use sigmoid function right we use sigmoid function and then we get the output either as class 1 or class 0 in the case of binary classification now let's see what is sigmoid function here in order to map predicted values to probabilities we use the sigmoid function this function maps the predicted values into another value between 0 and 1 right so we can say uh, this function we use to convert the predicted values into a form of probabilities if the sigmoid output is more than 0 0.5 we classify the outcome as a 1 or as a positive class if it is less than 0 0.5 we can classify it as a zero class or negative class and this is a formula here p equal to one divided by one plus e key power minus y so in the case of logistic regression first we can find the y on the basis of a given input right after that such y we can convert into a form of probability with the help of this sigmoid function right and the output of sigmoid function always lie between 0 and 1. After that, if the sigmoid output is greater than 0.5, then class will be 1. Otherwise, the class will be 0. Right? OK, so uh, that is about uh, sigmoid function. Now let's talk about loss function. So in the case of logistic regression, loss function depends on the number of classes that we have in a data set. Suppose if we have two classes means if we have binary classification problem in that case we will use log loss or logistic loss function but if we have uh, more than two classes means if we have multi-class classification problem in that case we will use softmax loss function right or we can say a categorical cross entropy loss function Right. So, logistic regression use a loss function which is called log loss or logistic loss to calculate the error. 
log loss means uh, we can say a loss function that represents how much the predicted probabilities deviate from the actual values. And this is the formula here. Log loss equal to summation x comma y belongs to data set D, where x is the input, y is the corresponding output. And uh, here minus y log of y dash, then minus 1 minus y log of 1 minus y dash. So x comma y belongs to data set D, where x is the input data, y is the corresponding output data, y is the actual label, right? Here y is the actual label and y dash is the predicted value, right? y dash is the predicted value after using software, oh, sorry, uh, after using sigmoid function, right? y dash is the predicted value after using sigmoid function, somewhere between 0 and 1. Right, so this is a loss function here. We can also call this loss function as a logistic loss function. So in the case of uh, a linear learner algorithm, if we have a binary classification problem, so we can just mention loss equal to logistic loss. Right, we can mention loss equal to logistic loss. So this is a loss function. Okay, now let's move on the next. So next we have a multi-class classification problem using softmax function. So at the back end, if we have more than two uh, more than two classes, so our uh, algorithm like a, a logistic regression use softmax function, right? So the softmax function is a function that turns a vector of k real values into a vector of k probabilities that sum up to one. Here you can see in this image. So if we have uh, three y values, 2.0, 1.0, 0 0.1. So with the help of softmax, we can convert each y value into a form of probability. You can see now 2.0 converted into 0 0.7. Next we have probability 0 0.2. Next probability is 0 0.1. Right. Right. And if we do the summation here, we will get the 1.0. And this is a formula to implement the softmax. Softmax function finds the probability for each class and the class that has highest probability can pick as a predicted label. Okay. So whenever we have more than two classes, our model use softmax function. And in the case of a linear learner algorithm, if we have more than two classes, so we have to mention a predictor type equal to multi-class classifier Right, and the loss function we can use here softmax loss. Right, the loss function we will use softmax loss function, or we can say categorical cross entropy. Next, we have hyperparameter twinning. So, hyperparameters are defined as the parameters that are explicitly defined by the user to control the learning process. Right, the process of selecting the best hyperparameter to use is known as hyperparameter twinning. And the tuning process is called as hyperparameter optimization. So if we want to improve the model performance, we have to find the best value of the hyperparameters. For example, in the case of KNN, we have hyperparameter n neighbors. Right? We have hyperparameter n neighbors. The default value is 5, but every time the default value will not be good for our data. Right. So uh, it might be possible that we have to perform hyperparameter tuning to find the right value of the n neighbors. Right. So choosing the right value for hyperparameter maximize the model performance, minimizing a predefined loss function to produce better results with fewer errors. Right. So while hyperparameter tuning, we choose the right value for our hyperparameter to improve the model performance. Let's implement hyperparameter hyper tuning using scikit learn but, but uh, before this, uh, we will see how to implement uh, multi-class classification right, or binary classification using linear learner. So here I have already logged in into my AWS account. So let's open the SageMaker and open the S3. If I show you how we can implement binary classification or multi-class classification using linear learner, 
So, uh, okay, so let's open the official documentation of linear learner. Linear learner, Sage Maker. Okay, and before this, let's uh, create a notebook. Let's create a notebook instance. My first code. You can take here any instance name. Okay, and rest of the values you can use as default. Okay, now click on create notebook instance. Now it will take time. And meanwhile, uh, we can create uh, a bucket where we will store our train and test data. And also we will store the model here, our train model here. So let's take here uh, either. So here we have to pass a unique name. So iris CLS demo. Okay, and rest of the values we will use as it is. Now click on create bucket. Now click on this. Now here we can create a folder. Folder name is my data. Here you can take any folder name. And let's create one more folder that is a uh, saved hyphen model. Okay, now let's here you can see the documentation. So here uh, we have a hyperparameter that is predictor type, right? And for in the case of binary classification, we can pass the value binary classifier, or in the case of multi-class classification, we can pass multi-class underscore classifier, right? Okay, and the next thing the about loss function. Okay, one more thing. Uh, if we have more than two classes, right? So we have to use number of classes, right? We have to use this hyperparameter, right? And we have to pass the exact number of classes that we have in our data set. If we have more, uh, if we have a multi-class classification problem, suppose if we have uh, three classes. So here we have to use uh, number of classes equal to three, right? Number of classes equal to three. Okay, now let's talk about loss function. Okay, let's open this Jupyter notebook. Okay, so where is loss function? Okay, here you can see we have uh, so many options here. You can see logistic. Okay, so logistic loss or log loss, both are same. It means this uh, this option we can use for binary classification. We also have others like uh, squared loss or absolute loss. So these two options we use for regression. And uh, we have some more options here. But here uh, you can see this option or equal to auto means if we don't mention the loss, right? So it will take the value automatically for this hyperparameter. Right? Okay. And one more option we have softmax loss means if we have more than two classes so uh, so in that case we can also use here loss equal to softmax underscore loss right if we have more than two classes we can use this loss function right or we can just uh, like, or we can just leave this uh, hyperparameter right uh, after that it will take the loss function value automatically right according to the predictor type now i'm going to upload a jupyter notebook file from my local system let's look at this so these are the hyperparameters here so we can also implement a logistic regression on ms data set what is ms data set so basically uh this is a handwritten digit data set where we have images right we have data in the form of images so we have images like you can see uh, we have images like this one right so in this analyst data set we have grayscale images right and the number of classes we have 10 here 0 to 9 and the size of each image is 28 by 28 right but uh, total number of samples we have 70,000 okay the total number of samples in this data set we have 70,000 
and the number of features will be have 784 right the number of features will be here 784 so this is a amnist data set so if we use this data set right so we will have a multi class classification problem right so in that case we can pass predictor type equal to multi class underscore classifier and the loss function we can use softmax underscore loss okay uh, if we take a binary classification data set so we can use here a uh, cancer data set where uh, we will have two classes right where we will have two classes benign and malignant if we search here number of classes in cancer classification data set art taking too much time okay so you can also download this data from this Kaggle website, from this Kaggle link. You can see in this data, we have two classes. So what are those classes? First is benign and second one is malignant, right? So uh, if we use this data, so uh, we will have a binary classification problem where we can use a predictor type equal to binary underscore classifier, right? And the loss function we can use logistic. Okay. Restart and clear output. So first we will import some necessary libraries here. Okay. And in this iris data set, we have three classes. Okay. In this iris data set, we have three classes. So this will be a multi-class classification problem. So if we use here softmax, so for the each, for uh, corresponding to each given input, we will get three output, right? We will get three output because here we have three classes, okay? So softmax finds the probability corresponding to each class. If you want to see the number of classes here, inputs, dot target dot value counts you can see we have 50 samples of each class we have three classes here zero one two okay and next uh, we will set the first column as a target column we can use here pd dot concate so here we are performing concatenation column wise and here you can see the first column we have as a target column, right? And rest of the columns we have as the features. So we have four features here and one target column. Now I'm going to split the data to train and test. So train data and test data. So these are the data frames actually. And now we want to save our data in the form of CSV file. So train data, which is a data frame object to CSV, which is a method here, then file name index equal to false, header equal to false. Similarly, we can save the test data into a CSV file, which is here test underscore data dot CSV. Okay, next we will save our data, means uh, we will upload our data into S3 bucket. And this is the bucket name iris dot uh, cls and uh, iris hyphen cls hyphen demo. And if we run this, so first here we will create a stage maker session object. Then this is the bucket name where we want to upload our data. And this method we can call, we can pass the file name and we can pass the bucket name and we can pass a subfolder name. Right, or key underscore prefix means subfolder name. So you can see this is the path of my train data.csv file. Similarly, we can upload validation data or test data here. And you can see here, if I refresh this page, so in the my folder, you can see we have got two files here. First, 
test underscore data dot csv second train underscore data dot csv now we will configure our training chalk so we will here retrieve the linear learner algorithm so each algorithm in sage maker we have as a container means as a docker image so image underscore your is dot retrieve linear learner and here we have to pass the region name and this is how we can find the region next so here we can set the output location means so we can set the model location right uh, where we want to save our trained model so this is the subfolder that we have just created here in the uh, in this bucket inside this bucket you can see we have this subfolder saved saved hyphen model so in this subfolder we want to save our trained model all right so this is how we can set the location okay next which is important part here uh, we have to declare a linear learner estimator not kn linear learner estimator linear learner estimator so the first here we can pass container means the image that we have just retrieved and then we can pass the role so, so the role we can get using sagemaker dot get execution role so with the help of this role our uh, notebook instance can access that data and uh, okay and then we can mention the instance count and then we can mention the instance type ml.m4.x large then we can mention the output location and then we can mention the session sage maker session object here okay next we will create the input channel means uh, channel for our training data and validation data so we can call this method here training input we can mention the path the path of our training input data and validation input data and content type okay now you can see in this data we have three classes right we have just seen right in one of the previous cell uh, we have three classes means this is a multi-class classification problem so here we can pass predicted type equal to multi-class underscore classifier okay so this option we have to pass here if we have more than two classes then batch size 20 number of epochs 5 we can also change this number right you can uh, play around uh, this number and uh, number of models here we can take 10 right you can also change this number so these are the hyperparameters right these are the hyperparameters loss function here softmax underscore loss if you don't pass this value so it will choose the loss function automatically so loss function equal to softmax softmax underscore loss because this is a multi-class classification problem number of classes you have to mention here so in this data we have three classes right so number of classes equal to three next uh, we can call fit method we can pass training data channel and validation data channel similarly you can uh, perform uh, this multi-class classifier operation on this MNIST data set, right? But if you use uh, cancer data set, so this is a binary classification data set. Okay, uh, we have uh, some more examples like uh, news classification, news classification data set. You can see here how many classes we have. Uh, there are total 42 categories in the data set. It means we have 42 classes here. So instead of uh, so instead of working on all the classes, you can also pick uh, specific classes, right? Okay. Another option: uh, email spam filtering. You can also do here email classification where we have two classes right and this data set you can download from the Kaggle link so if you so if you download the data from this link you will get train.csv file test.csv file 
So in this data, we have uh, two classes, right? Ham or a span. So this is a binary classification problem. Okay, it, uh, now it might take some time. Okay, uh, you can also use here a Titanic data set. This is also a binary classification data set where you will get two classes survived or not. So in this data, you will have two classes survive or not. So this is also a binary classification data set. So these problems so we can also solve with the help of linear learner. We also have some other algorithms, right? but if you want to use a algorithm which is based on a linear model, right? so we can use here linear learner. Now you can see, so training is in uh, progress. After that, we will create a endpoint. I guess what does mean by endpoint here? See, uh, means uh, we will create a, uh, 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 you can say uh, a file, right? Uh, uh, means uh, uh, we want to just save our train model. Right, we want to just save our train model and that model we can access with the help of AWS other services like uh, uh, suppose uh, we have a web application right and from such web application we want to send some input data to our endpoint location right to our endpoint location right and that endpoint location will return the predicted output right Okay, so I think uh, the training part has completed. You can see. So next we will create a. So here, uh, we are, here we are trying to define the endpoint gain. Okay, well, so model dot deploy, initial instance count equal to one, instance type we will use the same instance type ml dot m four dot x large, endpoint name. If you run this. It will also take some time. Okay. So these are the hyperparameters here. If you want to increase uh, model performance, we can also pick some other optimizer. You can see we can use uh, SCD, Adam, RMS prop. Right? But if you don't provide any option, it will choose the option automatically because here we have also this option auto. So optimize, optimization algorithm basically uh, finds the right value for the parameters. Parameters means weight and biases, right? By minimizing the loss function. So with the help of optimization algorithm, we can find the best value for the parameters by minimizing the loss function so here we have some basic or some advanced hyperparameters here so here we are using softmax right so here we will get the output okay so in the output we will get the predicted label and also we will get the probabilities means a uh, probability for each class Suppose if you pass a input to our train model, so our train model will return a predicted label and also probability corresponding to each class. So in this data, we have three classes, means we will get the three probabilities. So here also we have some other algorithms. So like uh, you can also implement, uh, okay, uh, suppose we want to implement SVM. SVM in AWS CH Maker. So using scikit-learn, we can implement SVM, means support vector machine, which we use for classification and also for regression. But here, if you want to implement uh, SVM, you have to pass loss function equal to hinge loss. Right? Hinge loss, basically a loss function that we use for SVM. And here you can see in the 
linear learner we have an option you can see hinge loss right so this loss function basically we use to implement the working behind SPM right so through this algorithm we can implement SPM if we pass loss equal to hinge loss if you want to get more detail about this loss function you can just search here uh, hinge loss function and here you will find this loss function basically used for SVM. You can see hinge loss function, loss function used for training classifier, and this function used for maximum margin classification, most notably for support vector machine. Okay? So if you want to implement a SVM through linear learner, you have to use hinge loss function. If we use here MNIST data set, so I think uh, it will take more time while training because in the MNIST data set, we have 70,000 images and we have 70,000 samples in the form of images. And so uh, it will be good uh, if we have data in the form of images, we can use a uh, instance type that support GPU, right? That support GPU. So in the in the AWS, we have some options right to implement the instance type for GPU, right? But if we use them, so uh, we have to pay some extra charges. Okay. So after that, uh, here you can see in the endpoint section. Here you can see under the inference, uh, this is the endpoint. Right, you can see this endpoint we have just saved. You can see the status is in service. So now, if you want to use this, so we can access this endpoint, right? Also, with some other AWS services like EC2, Lambda, right? So you can see model name, the status, real time, and this is the URL, right? This is the main thing here. Duration time. Okay, and we also have here link for models. You can see linear learner model. So here we also have some information about the model that we have just created. And this is the model location link, right? So this model location is we have just saved into this bucket, right? In the output section, you will find, you can see this model and the output right so this is the model that we have just saved here in the form of i think a tar file okay next uh, we can set the uh, serializer and deserializer next uh, we can uh, so we can take a variable x test where we can store the test data so we have test data we have 38 samples for features Similarly, we can create a variable y test where we can store corresponding target values. Now we can use model underscore predictor dot predict and x test. And we can see the result. So we are getting the output in the form of JSON. Right? We are getting the output in the form of JSON because here we have this passed uh, deserializer. Right? We have this passed deserializer equal to JSON deserializer. JSON deserializer means here uh, if you use this, we will get the output in the form of JSON. So every time if we uh, uh, if we use this train model, right, or even if we use this endpoint, right, if you use this endpoint, always you will get the output in the form of JSON. And here you can see we have a key prediction and we have a corresponding value. And here we have a score. You can see we are getting three score. We are getting a three score. So basically, these are the probabilities. Right? You can see each value we have between zero and one. Each value we have between zero and one here. Right? So these are the probabilities. And you can see the highest probability is, I think, this one, 0.53. So on the basis of uh, these three probabilities we can say the predicted label will be here one and you can also see we are getting also predicted label one 
So one we are getting because of highest probability. Okay? The class one has highest probability here. That's why we are getting predicted label one. You can see here another output. Uh, here we are getting three probabilities. So each value we have between zero and one. So these are the probabilities. And you can see the highest probability is 0.7. That's why here we are getting predicted level zero, right? Because class zero has highest probability here. Okay, right? so here we are using softmax. That's why we are getting probability corresponding to each class. Okay, right? so but here uh, we need only predicted label. So we can run a for loop here. Right? We can run a for loop, and we can just extract the predicted label from the output, right? And after that, we can convert them into a form of array. So now we are getting here array. And now we can find the accuracy score. So in the case of classification, we use accuracy score, right? So in the SQLearn, we have this a built-in function and we can call this function. First argument, we can pass actual output that we have in byte test. And the uh, next organ we can pass predictions, means uh, predicted output. So the, the score we are getting 0.89, means we are getting around 90% uh, accuracy on the test data. Right? Okay? We are getting a 90% accuracy. We also have here some misclassified samples. Right? We also have some here misclassified samples. Okay, after that, uh, we want to delete the endpoint, right? Uh, because we don't want to pay any extra charge, right? So once you are done, so you, you must delete the endpoint here. Yeah. So I'm going to delete the model and also the endpoint here. After that, here you will find there will be no information about the endpoint. You can see now there is no information about the endpoint that we have just created. And similarly, you will find no information about the models here. Yeah. So this is how uh, we can work on multi-class classification using linear learner. If you have any binary classification problem, so we, here we can just pass binary classifier. Right? Predictor type equal to binary classifier. Right? And the loss function we can use logistic loss function. Right, logistic loss. Okay, now let's talk about hyperparameter tuning. How we can implement hyperparameter tuning? So here I'm going to create a new file here, called Python three. Okay, and let's stop this. Uh, and this notebook we want to stop. Okay, so if you want to implement hyperparameter tuning. Oh, uh, let's take data from sklearn dot. So I'm going to take uh, iris data set from sklearn dot data sets import load iris. And we will use a model here, KNN sklearn dot neighbors import so first here we are trying to understand what is hyperparameter tuning right import k neighbor classifier okay and from sklearn dot uh, model selection to split the data into train and test and we will also use here uh, a class that we will use for hyperparameter tuning. So we have some inbuilt classes in SQLearn, like uh, grid search CV. We also have some others, but here we will use grid search CV. So from SQLearn dot model selection import this one grid search CV. Now we will load the data. So load iris and uh, x equal to load iris and uh, here we will use 
features equal to x dot data and targets equal to x that should be in uppercase dot target and here x also x here must be in uppercase next we will split the data x train comma x test comma y train comma y test equal to train test split we can pass here features comma targets comma the size point two zero next we will create a model object so canon equal to k never classifier next we will create an object of this class it's a cv okay and before that uh so in the canon uh, in this algorithm we have uh some hyperparameters you can see so now we want to find the right value for this n neighbors how we will perform hyperparameter training so uh, let's take a dictionary here p equal to dictionary and we uh, here we will take the hyperparameter as a key and that is here n underscore neighbors we have to pass the just copy this one the spelling should be correct here otherwise you will get the error okay next uh, we will define some corresponding values in the form of list let's say uh, 3 5 3 4 5 6 7 9 so these are some uh, values right okay so we want to find the right value for this hyperparameter next uh, uh, good equal to we have to create an object this class first argument we can pass our model object which is here knn then p which is our dictionary here or uh, parameter grid equal to p and then scoring we have an argument here scoring scoring so we want to use a scoring method let's take here accuracy because this is a classification problem you can see we are getting no error here now grid dot fit here we will call fit method we'll pass training data strain comma y train if you run this okay now oh, we will see what are the best hyperparameters here how we can find them uh, we can use grid dot best uh, you can see we have best estimator best index parameters you can see the best value of n neighbors is three and the best score here we also have best score that we have 0.97 it means uh, if we use n neighbors equal to three for our test data we will get the score accuracy score around this value okay right? so let's uh, use this knn model with this value and it was equal to three right? and let's find the accuracy for the test data so uh, here we can we can see also uh, we can get the best estimator right and that we can store into a variable let's take a clf and what is clf here so clf basically is a trained knn model you can see here n neighbors equal to three we are getting right n neighbors equal to three now this model we want to use to find the score on the test data so this is a, another way to find the accuracy on the given data points so here we want to get the accuracy on the test data so x test comma y test you can see 0.93 right which is around 0.97 so 
this is how we can perform hyperparameter tuning. And the same thing we can implement with the help of AWSH maker. Right? And that uh, you will implement by yourself. So with the help of hyperparameter tuning, we can find the right value for a given hyperparameter. And here we are getting the right values three. Right? Here we are getting accuracy 0.93. Right? And there might be uh, some other right value. Right? So we have to just pass here some other values here. Right? We have to pass some other values here. Okay, guys. So it was about uh, logistic regression and hyperparameter tuning also. Okay, guys. So let's wind up this session. And thank you so much.